Hey y'all, so on to War 4. If you're thinking you missed War 3, I made a post about it, but you didn't. I didn't make that video because I lost almost all of the footage <laughs> except me missing a dex of Bishop Special 2, which isn't all that exciting. So, focusing on this war, it's a pretty short one. This Node 25 Omega Sentinel is the first thing I'm taking. And I did a lot of practice for this. You absolutely can be... Um, a little fancier here. It is possible to heavy punish her special one. I don't feel a hundred percent about it, and I that makes it, you know, just not worth it to me. Um, for the spacing, tried a couple different times. I'm still working on my like secret sauce to get it greater than 95% reliable. Until I'm there, I don't go for heavy punishes in war with Tigra. Now, the Heavy after her heavy is actually extremely simple and safe. The reason I'm not doing that here is because, personally, I um, I don't like baiting heavies on kinetic transference because if the opponent just does like a five hit into your block, you can get in trouble very, very quickly. So instead, I focused more on combos there. If she threw a heavy, I was ready to counter, but noticed that she literally did not the entire fight. And then we just rushed to the special two, and then immediately threw a special one after it with the power we got from it, and the fight was thankfully over. Once again, very glad to have a rank 4 Tigra. If this were a different season, that is a fight where turning on the recoil masteries probably would have made sense. I'll also just briefly say that the patch notes that came out yesterday um, include a change to the way neutralize functions when the opponent is immune to ability accuracy reduction that may mean Tigra cannot take this node because of force of will in the future. That is a longer conversation that I'm willing to have on stream or something, but I'm not going to bloat this particular video with. So moving on to Hyperion versus Magneto. Magneto is conduit. Hyperion is sick and tired. This is very, very simple. Hyperion is not metal. Magneto does have that big prowess, so, you know, if we ate, like, a special two and it crit, we would die instantly. But beyond that, this is very simple. As I've said in some of my other Hyperion fights this season, I do like to open with a heavy, and I'd love to have my parries fail. Um, but other than that first special one, or other than that first heavy, I'm focusing on spamming the special one over everything else. If I throw more heavies to get my Furies up, then I may be pushed to the special two, and I may have some downtime on Conduit, which can absolutely be worth it. You can go for the special three to get those Cosmic Charges, which kind of function like permanent Furies for Hyperion, but I just knew I didn't need it here. This is a rank four Hyperion, Spamming special ones is all you need. The heavy at the start is just one you throw because you know it's not going to mess with your rhythm. So similar things against this Immortal Abomination, except we don't have to worry about Conduit. This is just, we're going to throw heavies when we can, which can be after his special one, and we're just going to nuke him down. All that matters here is don't parry too often because it's hard knock life. Don't push him to a special two, because if you block enough hits from specials, he will go unblockable on his next special, and hit him until he falls over. That is our full plan of attack. So this time we do go for the special three, because it's going to just make everything else flow a bit better. In longer fights, I highly recommend that. Those cosmic charges provide physical resistance as well as attack bonus. They are very, very strong, let you block better. They make sure that you have better uptime on your power gain, and you see how much progress we're making after throwing that special three. Go into the first special one here. <laughs> I think we threw th just two special ones after the special three, and down he goes. I'm so glad I finally have Hyperion at a competitive rank again. It's been, I don't know, four years? It's been a long time since my 565 Hyperion was my main in war, and I really missed it. So on that note, we had this Overseer assigned to either Nick Fury or Mole Man. We had both down as options. 
But because of when people were asleep, I did bring up when we were planning that hype was an alternate here. And I was just like, it's fine if, you know, people aren't around. I'll clear it with hype to make sure we move on. So to briefly go over the reasons that hype was not a first choice, the biggest one is just that he's constantly gaining power. And so Overseer is going to get more gamma during this fight than he would in almost any fight where you are not constantly triggering his immunities. So this is about as bad as it gets before you really shouldn't have taken that Overseer with that character. The other potential problem is that he is going to heal like you see here, and that heal is going to get stronger as the fight goes on. And we are not going to be able to heal block it because Hyperion's heal block with Sick and Tired depends on debuffs and Mighty Charge shrugs debuffs. Now the reason him gaining Gamma is a potential problem is, for one thing, it powers the heal, but the bigger thing I'm concerned about is that if I go for an intercept and mess up, while he's in cosmic mode and he throws four lights into me, the fight is probably over. And so I think I go for one light where it feels good, but it doesn't work. And I don't go for any others throughout the fight because I was just like, you know what? This is a rank four Hyperion. I do not need to intercept to win this fight because we are going to heavy counter all of his special ones, we are going to heavy counter a fair number of his heavies themselves, we are going to spam special threes and just do a ton of damage. And that's going to be enough. This isn't quick. We are two minutes in and he's at 60% health, so that's like basically exactly the cadence we need. Notice I also kind of messed up there on, there were windows for heavies and I didn't take them. I don't regret that because if you're slow, it can be ugly. But there are definitely a couple places within this fight where, oh, that was definitely a spot, sorry for saying definitely so much. That was a spot where I could have thrown a heavy, it would have boosted my damage output, it would have accelerated the fight, and I didn't take it because I was just a hair too slow. That's okay, I know that one of my biggest limitations is my own reflexes, and that is on display here. But we are also healing back up, so we have quite a bit of room to get away with things. That's kind of the other reason that we're not throwing special ones, is because of all these concussions. The incinerates won't matter. See, there's my failed intercept attempt right there. The incinerates won't matter because he shrugs them, but failing to apply them will absolutely matter as he deals a bunch of damage to us. That's the other reason for just going for the special three over and over and over again. It's safe, it's reliable. I don't think it's subject to the... No, there it is. There's the retaliation damage. Okay, so we definitely are taking it. But it spreads it out and allows us to heal back from willpower. And so we really don't have to concern ourselves with it. Whereas basically any other special would be more frequent and have more potential triggers to fail. And so it's just better to avoid those. So let's check in and see if we are on pace. We have him down to 18%, 12%, sorry. So that's an eighth of the overall time. And we have a minute and a half left, which is about 30% of the overall time. So yeah, we're, we're good to go. This is closer than you would expect. Like I said, the heal gets stronger as the fight goes on. But that's not something I'm worried about because Hyperion is not slowing down and we are ahead of pace if you think about it in a linear perspective. If you think about it in a non-linear perspective, then that's not really math I can do on the fly, but I feel like we're fine. There we go, down to 50 seconds. He's at 4%. The heal is chunky. But this is going to be okay. I think at this point we're basically waiting for that shield to go away. And then it's probably going to be a combo. Let's see if we crit. Yep, there it is. All right, so 30 seconds left. That is much closer to a timeout than I would normally want to come. Which is why he was the third choice for that assignment. But definitely takes it. It's kind of impressive that hype can brute, brute force and out damage that many mitigations. Really fun to see that. So moving on to Mangog, I've taken this four times this season now. Once was a rank four. 
I haven't died yet. I'm going to go ahead and knock on wood after this recording is over so that I don't hurt y'all. But basically the idea here is to rely on Reed's um, native evade as much as possible for avoiding damage from the special ones. See, there you go. We're just blocking. We're relying on the damage reduction as well. And we're relying on the evade when it kicks in so that we can just heavy and stay close and try and get him to throw as many special ones as possible while we ramp. Now this is going to put him to 9 hatred, which is a bit of an issue potentially because his next special is going to send him unblockable and unstoppable. But we got that stagger up. We don't want to accidentally stun him and run out time on the stagger. He throws this. But we made a little bit of a mistake there. That was the first special one where we actually triggered Mystic Dispersion, and he could go unblockable and unstoppable there. Thankfully, we were able to re-parry, and now we have this a little more under control. Yes, he's been pushed to a special two, but I don't really care, <laughs> because I know Reed can survive one or even two of those. We get fully ramped. I am running max inequity, so we're dropping his attack by 36% plus the 25 and then 50% on the special 2. That's why it did so little damage. We're doing fine here. I do go to, uh, for a dumb heavy counter there. I got a little bit off my rhythm, but that would be fine. He could come in for a parry there. I could knock him down, but the reversed willpower catches up and we're good to go. So... Not quite as safe as Spider-Man 2099 with the Anti-Venom Synergy, but I really do think he's the best option, other than Quicksilver, this season. So opening up a bonus featured crystal here, I'm basically looking for dupes. I actually got excited, more excited here, because I didn't remember that I had already duped my thing from this crystal. But Thing basically needs high sig, so going from 20 to 40 is still a win. It's a small win. I would prefer a dupe on Omega Sentinel, Hulkling, Rintra, one of the others, right? But this is still definitely a good pull. I'm going to keep opening the reduced price sigil versions of this crystal until it rotates and save the other shards for the next one, because it also looks great. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this war. It was on the shorter side, but there was quite a bit of Hyperion in it, and that makes me happy. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.